Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessing, glory, and honor, power, might, and dominion be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Valerie. Hi. Lisa and Winona, look it. Thank you. Where are you from? Hallelujah. Good morning to everyone. What a pleasure. Hallelujah. I'm starting to recognize uh, the names of some of you that are with me, uh, I guess, on a somewhat regular basis. I am so grateful to God and thankful to you for uh, the value that you find in spending time this time together in community. We're coming into community, are we not? Hallelujah. Dr. Patricia Marino. Hallelujah. Artist, author, mentor, coach. Yes, my storytelling self. That's the artist part of me. Uh, and, you know, I've had a recent several books in inspirational poetry and uh, PhD dissertation on coaching. And I love in this season of my life mentoring and co coaching and teaching and exhorting and just digging deep into God's word. Want to honor, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, the black women empowered, hallelujah, ministry, hallelujah, thankful to be among those who uh, trusted to uh, build community uh, in that, uh, on that platform and in, in that endeavor. It is my honor and I'm thankful to Dr. Jacqueline R. King, she had a recent birthday, uh, and uh, trusting that it was just a blessed and blessed one. Um, she is the founder and CEO of the uh, Black Women Empowered Network. And I understand that, you know, there is also a Black Men Empowered uh, component as well. So the ministry is growing and building. And uh, uh, she is the CEO and founder. And I like to... Um, appreciate the fact that God has called people uh, such as herself and those who support her in uh, making this the, the systems work that this is built upon. Grateful for that and, uh, uh, and share the, the heart to, uh, this is a, an important hour for uh, people to be able to, as much as they can, uh, be built up in the uh, and in, in, in encouraged in their faith, hallelujah. And so um, I want to uh, just, uh, good morning, Regina, how are you? And Miss Nancy, hallelujah, Price, good morning from Indiana. Yes, yes, I'm from upstate New York, by the way. Uh, hailing from the South, however, born and raised in Atlanta, uh, been in upstate New York my entire uh, adult life pretty much so uh, all right I just uh, wanted to say hello uh, and and I'm trusting that uh, I don't always I get so caught up in, in in communicating and trying to get to what I believe God wants me to I may not respond back as much as you would like but I do try to get back and look at and 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 re definitely pray for any prayer requests and and uh, and appreciate uh, uh, your comments and input. Just thank you for that. And we are going to uh, go ahead and begin with communion as, as we uh, uh, have become accustomed to doing um, communion. Uh, I'm realizing more and more um, to uh, remind us and do as Jesus commanded us to do, did he not, uh, to do it in remembrance of him, that his uh, 
his body was broken for us in that his blood was shed for us hallelujah so um i have uh my communion cup and just uh, a cracker this morning and uh want to begin hallelujah we're going to be begin with uh, uh prayer father god it is in the the mighty and the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ that we come before our, before you this morning we come and gather in community in this uh, a, a virtual network that you have blessed us to become aware of lord god and 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 go so far as to uh, come in and participate lord god we thank you uh for the mind to do that for we thank you for uh, uh, this opportunity to to come together in communion hallelujah we thank you for uh, uh, we we come into agreement with the blood of Jesus hallelujah thank you God thank you that the blood of Jesus brings us healing hallelujah thank you that the blood of Jesus brings us salvation it brings salvation it not only saves us it brings salvation into our lives as a part of our lives hallelujah because we have saving hope in the different areas where things may not be exactly as we would like them to be hallelujah we thank you lord and we even take our cup of blessing that we bless this morning we take it and we not only do it in remembrance of you jesus we also have uh, we have a certain prayer request in area of our lives, Lord, that we really uh, invoke your mercies on. We, 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 we cast the care for a particular situation or two. We cast them hereby in this communion time on you, Lord, because you promise us when we do this and remember so that you care for us, Lord God. And so, Lord, we take the bread, the representation of your body, Lord Jesus, your body was broken for us hallelujah and we break it in remembrance of that breaking and we thank you for our right to the tree of life hallelujah we thank you thank you lord for the blood of the lamb that you teach us you teach us you're teaching us holy spirit day by day moment by moment how to give a right testimony hallelujah and we declare that as we take communion, we lay our lives down under the, under the empowerment of you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. And the, 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 the cup of blessing that we bless, we bless the cup of blessing. And we take it, as it says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 16, is it not the communion of the blood? Of Christ hallelujah and we thank you that when we take the bread it is is it not the communion of your body Lord Jesus and we thank you for your mediation for us in the courts of heaven hallelujah for the 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 the, the sacrifice hallelujah thank you Lord that has been made you have laid your life down and we thank you Lord for our uh, uh, our faith the, uh, the putting our faith in action and being obedient, Lord God, and, and putting our trust in you as we take communion. We begin this day, as we begin uh, uh, this week, Lord God, whether, whether we are people who leave our homes to work or whether we actually uh, um, are uh, in a place, whether we want to work at home, but we are able to work from home. We thank you for, hallelujah, thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood. We have redemption through your blood, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're thankful for that. Hallelujah. Like uh, Hannah's prayer encourages us. We, we bring rejoicing hearts. Hallelujah. For our re redemption. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bring rejoicing hearts and, 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 and exalted horns, hallelujah. And we anticipate mouths that will be enlarged over our enemies, hallelujah. Because we still, hallelujah, uh, have our treasures in earthen vessels, hallelujah. That the excellency of the power that people see 
in our lives that, that it may be of you, God, and not of us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins that we have, not only redemption, we have forgiveness. We thank you, Lord. We are forgiven and we learn. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for teaching us, our, us to forgive, Lord God, according to the riches of your very grace in our lives. We thank you for it, Lord. And we can now bring cases, hallelujah, because Jesus, your work is finished. We And we are in alignment with your work, hallelujah. We surrender, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bring cases to you uh, concerning our family and our, our, our needs, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. And we're believing you for great things. Oh, we are. We're believing you for great. We're bringing, believing you for divine resolution to some things that just seem to us uh, uh, impossible. Hallelujah. At least for us to resolve. We are believing you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are coming into community. You said when we agree as touching things in your name, Jesus, that you will be in the midst. And all we need to know is that you are with us and you are in the midst. And we thank you, Lord, for your body broken for us, your blood shed for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. For that. Our our, uh, we're going to pray uh, 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 several prayers before we get to our focus, but I do want to say earlier on than I normally might that our uh, we're beginning a new series today. We're beginning a new series. It is called Bones, Breath, and Brethren, and it is uh, based on Ezekiel 37 verses um, I think it's 1 through 14, yes, 1 through 14. And I, I just wanted to just put that out there, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, I just want to pray, now that we're in agreement with the blood, hallelujah, do you feel the presence of Holy Spirit? Thank you, Lord, for your anointing upon us during this time. And, and, and if, do you have your oil? You have your oil. I, I forgot my. I had it last week, but I forgot to uh, uh, to remind us. Hallelujah! And you may have already done it anyway, but I just like to do it as a model to remind us. Hallelujah! To anoint our hands, to anoint. Hallelujah! Our thinking. Thank you, Lord. To anoint our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anoint us, Lord, spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. Anoint us, Lord God, our time. Thank you, Lord, our space, the space where we live, the space where we need to be to, to handle our business and our faith. Anoint our families, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We take your oil and we we pray and we consecrate every single area of care on you, Lord God, because you are the one who cares for us. And we want to be free, Lord God, to be your dwelling and abiding servants, as you uh, indicate in Psalms 91, which we have also been pressing into, have we not? We uh, anoint, Lord God, our hands with oil, hallelujah, and we thank you for even our cup running over in our workplace where we work, our birthright, hallelujah, as believers, our entitlements as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. We thank you for anointing even our ministries, Lord God. We are people, hallelujah, who feel that we we, we may not, uh, uh, there's a Helen Steiner Rice poem that says we may not all be famous or listed in who's who, but every single person, great or small, has important work to do. Well, it's not the big celebrity in a world of fame and praise. Oh, but it is doing unpretentiously in undistinguished ways. The work that God assigned to us, unimportant as it might seem, that makes our task outstanding and brings reality to dreams. Everyone would brighten up the spot on which they are standing by being more considerate, oh yes, and a little less demanding. This dark old world would very soon eclipse 
the evening star. If everyone would brighten up the corner where they are, and that is the heart, hallelujah. I believe that we come with, we have that saving hope that we can make a difference, hallelujah, in our career and our finances and our possessions. We consecrate those to you as well, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God, for teaching us, hallelujah, to take your word, hallelujah, as a standard. Your word is truth. It's a standard for our lives, hallelujah, and we thank you. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, because we do ask it in your name. Ah, there's power in the blood, there's power in the very name of our Savior. Hallelujah, thank you, God. There's power in agreement. Hallelujah. Hey, I don't know about you, but I want to see the devil's butt running right up out of my uh, uh, my circumstances. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hey, I don't put up with it like I used to put up with it. Oh, no. Hallelujah. Don't make him think you're supposed to be out there trying to handle all this by yourself. You come into community. Hallelujah. And let's be there for one another. Hallelujah. I want to do um, a bit of review before we go into our, uh, uh, um, our focus. Bones, brethren, and breath. Uh, bones, breath, and brethren. Um, I wanted to just, uh, because uh, you might notice in, in, in uh, kind of naturally that we've talked about um, hands that war and fingers that bite and that we have two hands and we have ten fingers. Hallelujah. And that God, he, he's our strength. Let me, let me read uh, that Psalms 144 because these uh, scriptures... 144 about fighting hands and warring fingers uh psalms 91 where we are pressing into becoming god's dwelling and abiding servants as well as ephesians 6 where uh he instructs us holy spirit instructs us and guides us to put on the the whole armor of god so that we come today and we are ready to uh, uh deal with prophesying another another strategy i believe of warring hands and fighting fingers we we need to we might not necessarily call ourselves or feel called as prophets oh but we uh, may be called indeed to be prophetic when situations and circumstances under the guidance of holy spirit call for that hallelujah hallelujah we thank you Lord. i just want to read quickly psalms 144 and verse 1 it says Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth, this is King James, I say teaches, my hands to war and my fingers to fight. So Holy Ghost is with us, teaching us, hallelujah, and he's adding to us, hallelujah, as we press into him, hallelujah, and as we learn and, and receive encouragement and in between uh, uh, do our due diligence to, 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 to pray and to journal and to consecrate and to, um, to do that which it takes for us, hallelujah, to uh, be, continue to grow in, in, uh, in the truth of God's word. And so um, the, um, it, for, for Psalms 91, it's the warring hands and fighting fingers, and we're going to add to that today. But, uh, uh, um, no, I'm sorry, sorry, Psalms 144 is warring hands and fighting fingers. Uh, Psalms 91 is kind of like, um, of course, 144 and 1 is just one verse. Psalms 91 is an entire psalm, a psalm in its entirety. And in it, we learn what it means and what... Uh, it takes to be God's dwelling and abiding servant. I sum it up in that way because in that first verse, it says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. So we, we, we endeavor to be God's dwelling servants, dwelling with him so that we are comfortable in experiencing his presence so that our relationship with him with that that's what he's after really i sincerely believe in some he's after more relationship with us because he wants to bless us more and be there for us more and be able to put us on assignment like we're going to find out today in ezekiel 30 sometimes he has an assignment for us hallelujah and and if we're not in relationship with him hallelujah 
Hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm not sure how that will happen. Hallelujah. In Psalms uh, 91, we want to, uh, when he says, the secret place of the Most High shall abide. So if we spend time with him in a comfortable being with him and hearing him and listening and being obedient, then then that really, it's more like relationship. What's on his heart? I ask him, uh, Father God, what is on your heart today? And sometimes I get an answer right away. Sometimes I don't. But I think the fact that I ask sincerely, I find that he honors that and that um, I feel his presence more. Hallelujah. Not that we have to feel it, saints. I'm not saying that. But Father God appreciates our wanting and, and uh, to be in um, in communication and communion and fellowship with Him, and so uh, we become His uh, uh, abiding, and we abide under His shadow, and 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 that's why I call Psalm ninety one safety under his, safety under in His shadow. Safety we have safety in His shadow, but to be in His shadow it means that we're spending time with Him, doesn't it? We are spending time with with him, and we are um, we are learning to um, uh, to 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 be comfortable saying, "He's he's my refuge. He he's my re he's the place I go to for safety." And and I get it that that's a gradual maybe. Uh, may call for gradual repentance and not running to other people and trying to to be so approved by them in 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 different ways and all that that we may not really kind of like so consciously be aware that we are doing but but as we are obedient and we just say it say, he's my refuge we we may realize in humility I'm really not that good at this. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to start saying it. Because if we keep saying it and keep saying it, then what happens? If we say it, it says one day we'll realize that we have made. That's in verse 9. The say is in verse 2 of Psalm 91. But by verse 9 it says, because you have made, that means you've grown. You made him your refuge. Now you're so comfortable with him. He he is your habitation. You go to him. And it's a habit. Hallelujah. You have formed a habit. It's not sporadic. Hallelujah. You go to him. Hallelujah. And he loves it because then we get to a place where it says uh, uh, that we, we one day we realize we have set our love upon him. That's how he calls it. He realizes, hallelujah, you, you need to get to a place where you, you, it's me you love more than anyone. And, and so one day we realize, I've done it. I've set my love on him. Hallelujah. I kept saying he was my refuge. I got to the place where I was comfortable in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I would run to him as my place of safety. And one day you realize, I have set my love on him. I know his name. I know he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I know him as that because he's provided for me in situations where I could not, in any way that I knew, help myself. Well, but he provided, hallelujah. He provided in, in, in ways I'm not, I just would not think of. But his provision, his mercy, his grace came forth. And 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 and, and he healed me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He healed me, hallelujah, from Graves' disease. I mean, some of you, has God healed you? Uh, I was told initially that you, you great, once you got Graves' disease, that was it. And and and, and I uh, was asked to uh, facilitate a support group. I've been doing it for about seven years now of people that have thyroid eye disease. I, 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 it's, a, it's an interesting story. The way it happened, it was almost like I went to an initial kind of like pilot a group because you know uh, if you're familiar with familiar with support groups they have to be patient patient led uh, uh doctors and people like that can't lead a support group it needs to be someone who has that condition and so i have been diagnosed and you know and and my medical history with all that and and was in the in the in the throes of grace and and went to that group and it was so odd that i was watching the meeting i was way in the back and and it was like 
I could see myself doing it. And I'm like, what? I mean, these people don't, you know, it was just kind of like odd that way. It was like almost I could see myself in the future. Sure enough, about six, seven months later, I asked my doctor, I said, oh, uh, Dr. Feldman, what, what happened to the support group? And he asked me, he said, would you be willing to facilitate it? I mean, my mouth was stopped. I told him I'd think about it, but I knew that God had showed me that I was to do that. And so I began facilitating that group. And over time, this that was you know, back uh, probably 2000, maybe seven, something like that. God has healed me of Graves' disease. Uh, he has healed me of it, and I'm so thankful for that uh, because I, I, it's not something that a doctor will acknowledge. I've only heard him acknowledge it of one other person in the support group that they no longer have, have it. And I, and I have been symptom-free for years now, and I'm thankful because there are people that continue to suffer with it for decades. Um, and, and, and so God, he's Jehovah role for our, he's, I know him as you understand what I'm saying? When it says you, he, 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 you have set your love upon me because you have known my name. I know hence his name like that. Uh, my healer, my, my, my shepherd, hallelujah, guiding me when I don't know what to do. Holy spirit. I, I do it way, way more than I used to. Hallelujah. I just humble myself and speak in tongues because I don't know. Sometimes I got emotional issues that are tied up and it can, can cause you maybe to not pray as appropriately and on un- point as you should. I pray in the spirit so because I want to see God's kingdom to come into manifestation in my life. Not just for me, but the people around me. Hallelujah. I want to be his dwelling and abiding servant. I want to be a watchman on his wall. I want to be a part of his remnant. Hallelujah. And so I I do this. I I I was having tech, technic, technical issues at first, but I'm getting better at it. And I'm enjoying this so much. And I'm just thankful that he's my shepherd. He, he, he's my righteousness because I don't get it right all the time. He said his right hand and his holy arm, he would get me the victory. Hallelujah. And it's just all those different names, Jehovah Shema, because he's always there. In Psalms 91, he said, he says, I will be with you in trouble. He'll, I think about that sometimes now more saints than I used to. When I'm struggling and 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 I've just hit a wall, and I have to remind. I said, God is here. He's here with me now. And if my love is set upon, He says, when I call on you, Psalms ninety one. Look at it. I will answer you when you call on me. And I look at that now, and I I I just pray and pray and pray. Psalms ninety one. I'm getting to the place where I don't have to look at the words. You said when I call, I said, Lord, I have hit a row, a wall with this or that person or this or that situation. And I'm calling on you to help me because I don't know what to do. And, 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 or I know what needs to be done, but I can't do it, Lord God. Let me tell you something. It takes a lot of stress and pressure. And look, I look around and in some way that only God could do, hallelujah, he comes through. He's with me. He's with me in trouble. And he says he'll deliver you and honor you, satisfy you with long life. Hallelujah. He'll satisfy you with long life. Now look at Billy Graham. That man lived to be 99 years old. And I saw on YouTube the other day, uh, this black lady, the lady was, they had her dressed up so cute. She was 105 saints, clothed in all her right mind. Okay? I, I, I mean, God is that kind of God when, when, when we become his dwelling and abiding servants. And so I'm going to leave Psalm 90, 91 and just tell, touch a little bit on Ephesians 6 because this leads us up to, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, um, Ezekiel 37. In Ephesians 6, uh, and that's from, from verses, I believe, 1 through 20. I'm, I'm not sure about the verses looking at because I'm not looking at it right now. But in Ephesians 6, we have, oh, yes, it is 1 through 20. 
Uh, when we put on God's whole armor, because God is our strength, hallelujah. And as we become his dwelling and abiding service and, 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 and we are hearing him and, and he doesn't have to, life doesn't have to hit us with a plank for us to just know that God has something for us. Uh, when you look at God's whole armor, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I, I came away and I said, okay, God, there are three halves. Thank you, Lord. There's six pieces to the armor. Three of them are halves. It's a, and when I say halves, it, it is almost as though uh, it, 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 if, if you are uh, at a place where you say, okay, God, I, I want to be able to put on your whole armor and to be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all, I want to be able to stand. And so you help me, Holy Spirit. Uh, this is not McDonald's, and and I'm I'm willing to be uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, to learn and to begin to put these principles into practice in my life. He says there's three things you have to have. You need to show up with your with truth. So so you you you're you're not uh, uh, just learning about the word. You're already you don't need to be coaxed into the word. Your loins need to be. Uh, gird about with truth. You need to have truth and then you need to have righteousness, the righteousness that we can only get through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the arm of God is not available to unbelievers. Hallelujah. We need the breastplate of Jesus' righteousness and on our, and we need the gospel. And, 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 uh, 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 Ephesians, uh, six says it, the, the, our feet need to be shod. That means we're going to have to go places and, and we can't have tender feet where we go. Our feet need to be shod with the gospel that we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to be ready. Hallelujah. To encourage somebody. Hallelujah. Not make it a big old complicated deal. Hallelujah. To lead somebody to the Lord and, or, or, or just to water, maybe water some, maybe somebody else will lead them to the Lord, but we need to have, uh, 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 to be able to say to people, he's my refuge. I mean, sometimes your feet shower that just say he's my refuge and my fortress let people know that's this is how i'm getting this is why i'm not depressed and 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 so we need to have uh our loins girt about with truth we need to have truth going on hallelujah we don't need to be convinced we need to have righteousness we need to be have to be saved hallelujah for real hallelujah you're not just leaning over the sin to pay a tag which would say people you 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 have come in and join God's kingdom hallelujah because and you need to uh say this is so good I don't want to keep this to myself I got my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace hallelujah we don't have to live for the devil we can live for God hallelujah and then it says there are th uh this is was my when my study of the armor of God I realized not only are there three things that I need to kind of like show up already uh, 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 acclimated to. You might not, I don't know that we ever feel like we all all extra arrive, but we are acclimated to the truth of God's word, acclimated, hallelujah, saved and, and uh, uh, with Jesus and, 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 and have a relationship, hallelujah, uh, a communing with, with Holy Spirit. And, 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 and confident enough and bold enough, enough, knowing his names enough that we share the, the gospel. And then there's three things we have to take. When we take on, we want, we have to take the shield, the field of shield of faith must be taken. Uh, and we have to take the shield of faith because a lot of times the enemy, he, he, he'll be get, he's real mad with me right now. Hallelujah. But he can scratch and get glad. Hallelujah. Cause I'm not in this battle by myself. Hallelujah. I got Jesus mediating for me in the throne room of, in the courts of heaven. Hallelujah. And I'm believing God for righteous verdicts to come down to my behalf because I repent. Hallelujah. Cause I can be, uh, 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 uh would that not trust God in some ways that, that I have not in the past been, uh, been aware. But I'm aware of that now. I'm aware of my susceptibility to not trust God. And so I am pressing into Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To help me. Hallelujah. And I got some close friends. They pray for me too. Just like I pray for them and their kids. and them. Hallelujah. And I thank you because we don't do this alone. And so we we need to take the shield of faith to quench when the devil starts shooting at us. Hallelujah. 
And he's got people, they might be good people, hallelujah. They don't realize that they are unwitting dupes, hallelujah, of the enemy, hallelujah, in your life, hallelujah. But we need to have our face shield, hallelujah. They might not be convinced, but we are, we have to shield ourselves, hallelujah. And we stand on the word and, and speak that word, hallelujah, over our lives and circumstances. And then we need uh, the helmet of salvation, hallelujah. We need the helmet of salvation. Thank you, Lord. And, and I think of my helmet as saving hope. I got hope that things can get better and that I, hallelujah, that hope, I have the Holy Spirit given hope that my prayers matter. And so when I pray for people, I put myself shoulder to shoulder with them and I stand with them in faith. You stand in faith, I will stand with you. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'll even pray for you. Hallelujah. If you're feeling a little wobbly, but we need to learn to stand with one another and having done all the stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, because that's what it's about. It's about standing. And at the end of the fight, you're still standing. Hallelujah, with your loins girt about with truth, with that breastplate of Jesus' right, it's the shield of faith. And then not only do we, do we need to take faith and take salvation, we need to take the word of God. That's the sword of the spirit. That's the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah, in God's armor. That is the word of God. We must. That's how we get our truth. We have to be uh, 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 surrendered to our need. To, to, to read and study God's word. And that's a part of what time with me, I do believe, is about. Hallelujah. Because that's how I will encourage anyone who will listen to me. Hallelujah. I dig deep into the word. Hallelujah. I love to just dig in there and, 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 and see what I'm going to learn. I may already be, like, I'm already familiar with all these scriptures. But I as I go back to them now, I'm seeing things that I just never saw before. Because I didn't spend, bring the, well, I'm, Oh, not, not that it has anything sincerely to do with age, but we bring, hallelujah, wherever the Holy Spirit had brought us before, we bring ourselves back to that and we grow further into the Lord. And so that, um, I, I do believe, and I take it, I thought about it, I said, well, uh, how did I get to the place where I wanted to uh, uh, to do a series on uh, uh, um the first 14 verses of Ezekiel 37 about the, you know, the Valley of Dry Bones and all that. And I said, well, it, it, I, I've kind of like, you know, just following God's leading, focusing where he, he, what I feel he's directing me to. And it's like, it's been building. It, it's been building. And so uh, today is, is somewhat of like, a, you know, an introduction. Uh, and then I will, uh, uh, be going deeper. Uh, it may take only one session to finish. It may take, it may take a couple, but I just, uh, I don't get all, uh, flustered about that. I just, uh, am, have found that what, what it takes is what it takes. And, uh, I'm just, uh, excited to be, to be learning and to know that, that we are, um, that we are doing this that we are doing this together and that that I may be uh, an encouragement and an inspiration. And so um, I want to read um, Ezekiel 37. I want to read those um, those verses. Just a moment. Nope. Yep. Ezekiel 37. Just, just those first 14 verses. Mm. Oh, it's so powerful. Jesus. Hallelujah. Bones, brethren. Nope. There's three phases. It's bones, breath, and brethren. Because Ezekiel was told to prophesy three times by the Lord. He had to prophesy upon the bones because they were in the open valley, also dry, and just so very many of them. Things broken, hallelujah. And then he was told to prophesy unto the uh, the wind or the breath from the four winds. And then, hallelujah, you can't, can't live without breath. Hallelujah, you can't get up and go anywhere without breath. 
And then he was told to prophesy uh, to the brethren. They stood up and, and God began to call them his people. And so then they, an exceeding army. And so he was told to prophesy to them because they still had issues that they were no longer in denial of. And they needed God's uh, servant, God's, uh, uh, to, to prophesy uh, uh, the sovereignty, the God's sovereignty uh, in that situation and bring them out of the circumstance and the condition that they were in. And so it's, it's we, he prophesied upon the bones unto the breath, the wind, and he then prophesied to them as God's people because they had were no longer slain. They were standing up on their feet as an exceeding great army. Hallelujah. And so he had, he could then prophesy unto them. Hallelujah. No longer upon them as though they were bones all stripped, strewn out in the valley. So allow me to, uh, to, to read the, um, Ezekiel 37. Hallelujah. Those first 14 verses. Okay. And then I'm going to, uh, read this in uh, the King James version. Okay. All right. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit and set me down in a valley in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Sounds like to me there could have been another valley, but the one that God chose to assign Ezekiel to was in a valley that was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. It was open. Open with anybody because it was public. And they were very dry. It was a bad situation. And it had been bad long enough that the bones had literally dried up. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh, Lord God, you know. Hallelujah. So God gives him a focus. And he gets his attention. And it's not that he's just asking him to be asking him. He's really directing his focus. And he wants him to think about it. Can these bones live? And I answered, well, oh, Lord God, you know. Ezekiel was not stupid. He knew that God was asking him, and he already knew that Ezekiel knew that he was the only one that would know. But God still asked him because he's guiding him and he's directing him. And Ezekiel is in the process. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. Okay, here's he saying. Then prophesy. You know I know. Huh. Then he's telling Ezekiel what he's to do. He's on assignment. Here's it. You prophesy upon these bones and say to them. So when we prophesy, we say to the situation and the circumstance what God would have us to do. Oh, ye dry bones, talking to the bones. Strong out there on the valley, all separate. Been there so long, they're dry. Hear the word of the Lord. Because that's exactly what Ezekiel is going to say to them. Is what God has told him to say. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. And ye shall live. So, Ezekiel is saying right up, right from the beginning. He, this is what God says. He is that book. God says this. Verse six, and I will lay, thus saith the Lord God, unto these bones, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. That's what God said. And that's what Ezekiel said to the bones. And I will, here's the Lord said, and Ezekiel is saying I, because he is saying what God, as he is speaking on behalf of God into that situation. So he has a right, God has a time to say I will. 
lay sinews upon you and I will bring up flesh upon you. So I'm going to lay the sinews. That's the connective tissue. I'm going to bring up the flesh on you so that there'll be some meat again and cover you with skin. And I'm going to cover you back up so you will look regular, normal person. And cover you with skin and put breath into you. And ye shall live and ye shall know. So he's making it clear up front. When they breath in them, that's when they're going to live. He's going to bring them back together, connect them, and but they won't be able to live until they have breath, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And he says, and they're going to know that God is the one that did it, not Ezekiel. Hallelujah. And this is this is metaphorical. I take it. Ezekiel 37 is metaphorical. He's talking to these dry bones. Hallelujah. And and what they, they, and they represent, I believe, can represent dry bones in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. They can represent dry bones in, um, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just a minute. Dry bones in our spirit. Dry bones in our soul and even dry bones in our body. Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones in my time. Dry bones in my space where I live. Dry bones in my family, Lord God. Oh, ye dry bones, you hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones in my workplace, Lord. Dry bones in my birthright. And dry bones even in my ministry. And finally, hallelujah. Oh, ye dry bones, hallelujah. Hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones in my career. Dry bones in my finances and dry bones in my possessions. Hallelujah. And they continue to read. Hallelujah. And so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone. Hallelujah. There was a noise and a shaking. You think it's going to, when you prophesy and God tells you it's going to be all smooth. Not so. There was not only a noise, there was a shaking. It might not have been as violent as an earthquake, but that what, that's what comes to my mind. Things can be shaken up seriously. There's a noise and a shaking. But the bones came together. That's what it did. It, boned, it came together right to bone to its bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. Hallelujah. And the skin, so the sinews and the flesh came up, and the skin covered them. So, so Ezekiel not only prophesied, he was there when the evidence of the results. He, he was there. He saw that. So everything came together, and, and they looked like people again, I guess, or whatever life circumstance it looked like it should again, but there was no breath in them. You can't live without breath. Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain. Ah, they were still slain, he says. They had it all together, but they were still slain, that they may live. God's got to breathe on us for us to be able to live. Hallelujah. And fulfill our destinies in him. So verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them. There's the result. The breath came into them and they lived and stood up on their feet. God, so when you live, you can stand up. Ah, da, da. If you can't stand up, you're not living. You need to be able to stand up. Hallelujah. That they, okay, an exceeding great army. Now that says to me that they were unified, number one. So they were dry bones, all scattered. Now when they stand up, they're an army. They are on a mission. They have like a task and assignment. Verse 11, then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. 
And we are cut off for our parts. So, verse 11, when he said, these bones are the whole house of Israel. When I meditate on that and I look to the Lord, it's like those bones, when Ezekiel was told by the Lord to prophesy, that was the whole house of Israel. We can take that in principle and say, Lord, when the dry bones, my whole family. My whole family, Lord, the, the dry bones and the different broken relationships between me and my aunt, between my grandmother and 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 and, and my dad, or, or what, or what? Just my whole family. The bones can be a whole, the whole of a situation and circumstance that is beyond us personally. It's the whole house of something. It could be, why could it not be a whole nation? Why could it not be uh, our whole school system? Hallelujah. Why not? That we cannot prophesy. Hallelujah. As thus said the Lord. Then he said unto me. Yeah, okay. And he said, uh, they say. Uh, so the bones of the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. We are cut off. That part right there. To me, in principle, says that um, when they acknowledge that they are cut off for their parts, um, I take it in principle that they are being accountable, that they themselves are at least in part responsible for how they got in the condition where they were all over this valley, all broken up, all separated, and so dry they were no good. So... Uh, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. They had lost hope. They had breath in them. They stood up, but they had no hope. They were still dry and their bone hope was lost, they said. But so so then God tells us he could have prophesied that third time. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. I will open their life, their standing, their breathing, but they need God to open their graves. And he says, and cause you to come up out of your graves. So so, so graves are like uh, 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 situations, circumstances, heart attitudes that have us buried in different ways. To me, it sounds like an internal work that was needed probably for each individual, maybe as a society, as a, as a, as a nation even, uh, if they're there, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. We need the Lord to, not only to open things up to us, a, our awareness of the state that we have come to and that we have, yes, been participants. You can't always point the finger and say, but he did that to me and they did that to us and, 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 and he's like this and he's, he says, uh, uh, he will open your graves. We need to let God open our graves. We need to repent and bring us, cause us. Yes, we may, may not be able to do it, but we can prophesy, hallelujah, to the situation. And God will cause us to come up out of our very graves and bring us into the land of Israel, the land of his provision. I just love this. This is so encouraging. I don't know about for me right now and my personal life, I am so thankful to the Lord that he has brought me back to this, to look at this again. Because we can I almost despair sometimes. It just doesn't look like situations can get any better. But he says he will not only open up, our, but we need to be accountable. We need to stop pointing the finger. Oh, oh no, God, deal with her first. No, no, no. God. God, that's not right. No, he says he will open up our grave. We will be accountable and admit, here, Lord, I've been guilty too. I, I contributed to the mess. Open up your graves, cause you to come up out of them, and bring you into your his, bring you to into, into the land of Israel. Verse thirteen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves. So God is letting uh, uh, this Ezekiel is to prophesy this. But it also lets Ezekiel know that when he has opened their graves, he says, oh, my people, now God is calling them his people. When they were just a valley full of dry bones, all separated and 
dead. Oh, my people, and brought you up out of your grave. So he says, when he brings us up out of our graves, he says, and shall put my spirit in you. These are things we, see, God wants us to know what are the markers that he has done exactly what he said he would do. We do it in faith and we trust. But this is how we know. This is evidence right here. And he says, shall put my spirit in you. He'll put his spirit in us. Not that little mean-spirited person that we used to be or that our auntie Isabella used to be. He will put his spirit in, in us. And then he said, it, it is only then that, that ye shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. So people may all along in the process, they may not know. They may not really be, but when he opens up their graves, he brings them up out of some of those stinking old bad habits. Uh, 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 you've been dancing this way in a certain relationship for so long, you don't know how in the world you can stop going along to get along. How do you stop going along to get along when you've been doing it for 30 some years? Hallelujah. But God said, here's the hope. He said, when I have opened up your graves and brought you up out of your graves, you shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. I have opened your graves, O oh, my people. Hallelujah. I belong to him and brought you up out of your graves and you shall and have and shall put my spirit in you. You can expect that God's spirit to be put into either you or person or circumstance and shall place you in your own. God's got a place for you that you may have not even anticipated. Hallelujah. He's going to place me in my own land. He's going to place the, the uh, 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 thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. My family, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The, 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 maybe even the school district where the kids have just performed poorly for years and years. If we would put our ears to the ground, hallelujah, and prophesy, Hallelujah to the dry bones of situations in realms and spheres and domains where God has given us influence. Hallelujah. I believe that we can see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God will place us in our own land. Hallelujah. And, and we will know that the Lord has spoken it and performed it. Hallelujah, said the Lord. And so that's my introduction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There is more to plumb, I promise you, from Ezekiel 37. But I wanted to introduce it by giving you a review of, of those uh, 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 studies and, and, and our praying into uh, uh, Psalms um, uh, 144 and 1, warring hands and fighting fingers. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, um, Psalms 91, hallelujah, becoming his dwelling and abiding service, hallelujah, hallelujah, wanting, hallelujah, thank you. Even from Psalms 103, he says, uh, bless the Lord, all ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. We want to do his pleasure, hallelujah. We want to do it in places of, of his do dominion, hallelujah, where he's called us. And that's what he's here. Ezekiel was answering that call, wasn't he? And I don't know about you, but that's, hallelujah, what I want my testimony to be. Hallelujah. You can say, well, I'm too young, and I can say, well, I'm too old. We can do all those things, but but God doesn't hear it, I don't believe. Hallelujah. If it's not for everybody, I'm just saying, send me. Uh, you know, whatever I have to do, hallelujah, whatever adjustments, Holy Spirit, as long as you, I'm not by myself. Hallelujah. He said he would be with me in trouble. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My love is set on him that he would... Answer me when I call. Hallelujah. He will be with me in trouble. Hallelujah. Deliver me and honor me. Satisfy me with long life and show me his salvation. Hallelujah. That's what it means to be God's dwelling and abiding servant. And we, we are his dwelling and abiding servant. He will put us on assignment. He will ask us. I believe. Hallelujah. We should expect it. We should want it to, 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 to be called to prophesy and to go and to be a watchman on the wall and an intercessor and, 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 and a, and a soldier and know how to, uh, to, uh, to listen to Holy Spirit and, 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 and prophesy as he commands us to prophesy. Hallelujah. And not run away after we prophesy. We need to stay and we need to know to expect and, and minister in situations and, and be on call. Hallelujah. To, to, to pray in between as, as the situation unfolds and develops. Hallelujah. Until we get to the place where they see and they know it was God 
that did it and performed it. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for who and whose we are. Lord, I thank you as, as I close. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For marvels of your very mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For the three phases, bones, breath, and brethren, Lord God, that you would teach us. Hallelujah. As you teach our hands to war and our fingers to fight, Lord God, that you will grant us that grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. To prophesy. Sometimes it takes prophesying, hallelujah, to getting our hands, getting in there and 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 being in situations and, and among people and prophesying as God commands. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your marvels of, of mercy, hallelujah, wonders of wisdom, oh God, and extraordinary manifestations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. If you uh, have a prayer request, you can go to Black Women Empowered uh, uh, dot, no, Black Women Empowered Journal dot com, and you can leave a prayer request. You can make a donation to this agency, Lord God. This makes a ministry. Hallelujah. This is a ministry, a platform of the Lord. Hallelujah. What people are ministered to. Hallelujah. What the called. Hallelujah. According to the purposes of God. And we thank you, God, for this. I will look forward to uh, next week, hallelujah, um, dealing with, uh, go digging deeper into Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 20, 15, 14, bold.